everyone. So here's a look at the Lakers implications for the in-season tournament. So in-season tournament group play is heating up with big implications across the West tonight. 3-0 Lakers can clinch spot in the knockout round with the win. So the Lakers beat the Utah Jazz, then they would get the two, uh, automatically advanced number one seed in the knockout round. Uh, the 2-1 Jazz can clinch a spot in the knockout round with a win and a Phoenix loss. Uh, so Lakers have to get this win. Uh, if they don't get this win, then there could be some very interesting, obviously if Phoenix ends up winning, then there could be some real tiebreaker implications. And depending on how the Lakers-Jazz game goes, the Lakers could still uh, make it to the knockout round. But the Lakers, they do their job tonight. They get the W, they advance, and we're good. And we don't have to worry about it. Uh, Suns have a chance to win the Group A uh, with the victory again. Gets into tiebreakers, all that stuff. We'll go over that if that time comes. Point is, Lakers need to get the win. It's that simple. You win, you're in. Easy. Uh, and I just wanted to go over the East real quick. Uh, implications, because obviously, um, if we continue to advance and we win tonight and we end up making it to the championship round, well then, here's a look at that too. So a look at the East. 2-0 Pacers can clinch a spot in the knockout round with a win. Hawks have a chance to win East Group A with a victory versus Indiana. Uh, winners of the Cavs Sixers will also have a chance to win East Group A if Atlanta defeats Indiana. Again, goes into tiebreakers just to kind of give you an idea of like implications on the East as well as the West. But look, Utah last year gave us a lot of trouble. Uh, Utah is not off to the start that they were last year, right? Last year they were just... A uh, very good team early in the season, right? They were, I believe, the number one seed even uh, for a good chunk there. And uh, this season have just not started off in the same way. Uh, they are currently 4-9. and nine, And they are also on a two-game losing streak, right? They're going to want to get a win here, right? Just for seeding, just for the play-in tournament, this is another level. Everyone, the intensity is picking up, as we've seen with the Lakers, right? I wish every game was a in-season tournament game for the Lakers because they just seem to have more energy, more effort, more everything when it comes to that. But from the Lakers standpoint, look, we got to do our job. The Utah Jazz are a very beatable team. We should be able to beat them. We should be able to get this done, finish 4-0 in, in the Group A, and then we automatically advance to the next round, and we can kind of breathe a little bit in that regard. It also has implications because these games count towards the regular season total, right? So if we get this win, we're on a three-game winning streak, which is massive, and we'd be 9-6 and six on the season, giving us three games over 500, start giving us some separation, start giving us a little cushion uh, as we try to climb into the standings, into the seedings. And then if we end up beating Dallas, right, now we're like the fourth or fifth seed. At that point, it's just about weathering at that point. We just got to weather the storm and make sure we maintain that, like, little group uh, area of the of the you know three to, to five seed which is where I thought the Lakers would land I figured that they'd finish somewhere in like the three to five I didn't think that they'd be pushing hard for the number one seed just because you know LeBron and AD are gonna miss 20 plus games figured it'd take them a little time to figure stuff out which it has so far um, but again this is we're at home that's good because the Lakers have shown that they've been a very good home team right like th there's a little bit more of a uh, or there's a little less concern when the Lakers are at home, right? Because, again, they've only lost one home game all season. Um, if this was on the road, I would have a lot more concerns because it's like, you know, uh, Lakers have not been very good on the road, although the two road wins that they have were uh, NC's tournament wins. So, you now against the, the Portland Trailblazers and the Phoenix Suns. So, maybe, again, Lakers seem to really elevate and, and switch it up, but we got to stop digging into these holes, right? We need guys other than LeBron James to step up, right? Austin Reeves had a solid game. Uh, Cam Reddish had a solid game. Uh, not scoring wide, but just defensively still getting after it, which is great. Uh, Anthony Davis did Anthony Davis things. I thought the refs were just terrible in that previous game. Uh, even that foul to foul Anthony Davis out was total nonsense. Like, even the commentators were like, uh, like, man, I wish that they still had a challenge, which goes into the challenging rule, which is why, like, whenever people are like, oh, they should have challenged this or they should have challenged that, like, that's why, like, leave it to the coaches, leave it to them, because you never know, right? Like, you, yeah, we want them to make the challenge call early in a game, and and then if it doesn't work out, right, now you're you're in trouble. Yeah, if you win, you get a second one, but it's just it's just so risky. It's a roll of the dice, right? Because you're, you're trusting 
a ref to, to overcall a, ter- a, a, a terrible call that they made. And it's just, it's, it's tough, right? But we need guys to step up, right? D'Lo needs to come through. Austin Reeves need to come through. Can we get a game where those two guys together have a good game? Can we get a game where those two guys together actually show up to play the game of basketball together? And it's not like, oh, Austin had a great game, but D'Lo didn't. Or D'Lo had a great game, but Austin did it. Right? We need those guys to kind of get back to being consistent. That was the idea. That was the goal. That was what uh, was so exciting about this team was that you have Austin Reeves and DeAndre Russell, two guys that could easily go get you, you know, 15 to 20 a night each. Like they could collectively give you 30 points a night, take so much pressure off Anthony Davis, take so much pressure off of LeBron James, you know, not force them to have to play 40 minutes a game for us to just barely squeeze out games, not have to rely on LeBron James to go off for nearly 40 for us to win a one point game at home against Houston, right? Like these are the things that the Lakers need to start overcoming. We got to stop with these first quarter woes. You know, it's just, I don't know what it is with the first, like we, it's, we get better as the game progresses. We're one of, if not, we're close to the best team in the league in the fourth quarter. I think we might be at this point now, but Point is, is that we're one of the best fourth quarter teams in the league, but we're also like historically bad first quarter team. Like it's just it's night and day when you're talking about that. I've said this before. They're so consistently inconsistent, even throughout games. It's crazy. Like you know they'll they'll be terrible in the first half and excellent in the first in the second half. Look like one of the worst teams in the league in the first half and the best team in the league in the second half, or they'll look like the best team in the league in the fourth quarter but terrible the first three quarters, and they're playing catch-up the entire time. You know, I'm not saying the Lakers have to beat everybody by 30, right? You're just not going to. You're going to have games here and there like a Memphis game, right? Obviously, but I want to see them consistently night in and night out string games together, right? Have games where you're in control. Lakers haven't really felt like they were in control outside of that, like, Memphis game, right? Obviously, basketball is a game of runs. Obviously, there's the ups and flows of a game, right? You're going to have, you know, you, you're going to be up 10, and then all of a sudden you're down 5, and then you're going to be up 8, and then you're going to be down 2, right? Like, it happens. But you can tell in a game, like, who has control, right? Oh, the Lakers are getting much easier buckets. The Lakers are, you know, executing better. Lakers defense, oh, that was just a, a, a brief lack of just effort, right? It's not an entire game of it, though. Right, like you, you have the ups and flows, which is fine. But usually, you can see a team. Okay, they are clearly the better team. They're gonna win this game. They're gonna pull this one out. Right, like I, I felt like that in the Houston game, but not fully. Like watching the Houston game, I was like, okay, Lakers are getting easier, easier buckets. They're struggling. If it wasn't for that poor start, then the Lakers would probably be dominating this game, missing free throws, all that stuff, and the poor shooting. But Still, like, it was never, like, a fully confident thing. It was, like, at any point, (laughs) right, Houston Houston could win this game. Right? A better example would probably be the Portland game, right? Like, the Lakers start to finish pretty much controlled that game the entirety. There was a couple times where Portland went on a run, got it to, like, one or whatever. But, like, there wasn't a point at all in that game where I was, like, oh, the Lakers are going to lose this game. Right? That's what I want to see more of. Because all teams have those games. All every most games are like that, right? Games back and forth, close, and then in the fourth quarter, one team pulls away. And usually, the Lakers are the team that pulls away in the fourth. But the problem with pulling away in the fourth is when you're down 15 to 20, it means nothing, right? Like we got to do a better job. We got to stop letting LeBron James have to save us game in and game out. I mean, we won a game without LeBron. And we looked better the following game, and then we just resorted back to bad habits. Got to stop dribbling down the shot, uh, the shot clock and, and then passing for a bailout shot, getting our sets earlier, get things ran, dissect the defense, you know, take your time, obviously, but get good looks, get good shots, and please hit some shots, man. Seriously. Can the Lakers knock down some shots? It is crazy how bad they are. I mean, LeBron has been our best three-point shooter. And to start the season, I never would have thought that. (laughs) I like my concern was 
I thought we would be a middle of the pack defense or a, a three point shooting team, but I was worried that LeBron would kill our percentage. And it's been the opposite. LeBron has been great. He's been shooting what forty four percent from three this month, right? And everyone else has been killing the percentages. Like, where's Tory and Prince, man? This dude promised us forty percent from three. I'm not saying he has to give us forty percent, but oh, a four, one of eleven. Come on, man. Like, gotta be better than that. Right, D'Lo, 1 of 5? Come on, D'Lo, where are you at? Right, Rui, 0 of 4? Gotta be better than that. You know, Rui had a solid game, and Rui's been great. Like, don't get me wrong, but we gotta hit some shots. Christian Wood, 0 of 3? Like, that's crazy. We cannot be having games like that and expect to win a majority of them. You know, to go 6 of 29? Right? Like, we have guys that can shoot. We don't have any, like, natural, pure shooters, but we have absolute guys that can shoot the basketball. Right, we have guys that can, you know, hit big, timely key shots. We have D'Lo and Reeves who can both give you forty percent from three. Torian Prince is a thirty-eight to forty percent guy, right? Christian Wood is thirty-eight percent guy. Like we have these guys, but like, what is going on? Like, what is happening here? But anyway, as always, this is a discussion, so I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? Do you think, yes, we have to get this win? This is so important. Again, this might be the biggest win of the season thus far. Obviously, it's early in the season, but as far as if we're serious about winning this in-season tournament, then yeah, this is the biggest win thus far. But anyway, again, love to hear thoughts and opinions. Let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. It helps me out a lot. Let's me enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. If you're not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate you all. See you 